but in last six years what what is the trend do you see more companies looking to expand or it is reducing basically uh, what is the future for europe or germany why there is a major difference between employment rate in these different countries say compared to spain and germany there is a difference in the employment rate there's a lot of uncertainty but again there is a lot of also optimism as mentioned from us companies still uh, uh, planning to expand in europe Hi everybody, welcome to my channel Gurpreet in Germany and especially welcome to this video podcast where we have discussions with a lot of different people here in Germany and Europe such as hiring managers, candidates, HR professionals, startup founders and so on. So basically in this video podcast we have this discussion where we talk about actual insights of Germany and Europe which can help you settle well here in Germany and get your dream career soon. So today we have a very special guest with all of us. She is a trained labor law lawyer and she specializes in global HR management. She helps a lot of different companies from Europe and EMEA, all high tech companies to scale here in Germany or in European Union. So in this discussion, we are going to talk about a lot of different things on what these companies are actually looking for. And as a candidate, what can you do to make it big here in Germany? So let's welcome Yerich Schneider Rabinovich to our discussion today and understand from her what does it take to make it big here in Germany? Thank you very much for the great uh, uh, intro and happy to be here happy to join the conversation uh, so as mentioned i'm yarit i'm a, a level of lawyer and global hr operations coming from tel aviv and for the past uh, seven years working in emia yeah. today i'm based in berlin but also based the years of my seven years in sunny barcelona uh, working mainly with U.S. companies and would love to contribute from my experience also as a global HR, but also as an expat uh, myself, be successful in Europe. Great, great. So I am pretty sure this is going to be a very fruitful discussion uh, between us and which will help a lot of different candidates who are uh, planning to move to Germany or expats who are planning to come here and make it big. So before we get right into the discussion, tell us more about you. When did you move to Germany and why did you decide to come to Germany? Sure. So I moved to Germany, uh, Berlin, late uh, 2017 with my dear okay. husband. Uh, okay. We took this decision and this is uh, one of the advice that I can take for anyone that consider basically uh, moving from their own country to, to Europe. Uh, based on a few parameters. Uh, one of the biggest parameters was uh, basically the possibilities that I will have here as a global HR to pursue in my own industry, uh, making sure the economy is really strong, making sure that if I will not find myself in one role, I can uh, switch to another place and I can find really great uh, employment option. Second thing that was very important for me uh, was basically the, the fact that there is a huge expat, global expat community in Berlin, yes. which made me coming here feeling really relatively fast, a feeling of home and a smooth, uh, soft landing. Uh, yes. There is also, um, if I wanted, uh, a huge Israeli community, which is also make uh, life easier when it comes to um, uh, service providers and uh, if you have any difficulties, so uh, cultural nuance. It was also important for me to make sure that there is um, really stability when it comes to employment. So there are a lot of uh, protection yes. laws when it comes to employment. So even if you find yourself uh, out there, so uh, you know yeah. that the process would be fair. Yeah. Also present when you're moving. Yeah. Yes. So when you move, do you know German language, by the way? That's a good question. <laughs> Only <laughs> a, a, a few uh, words. I okay. have to admit, when I moved, I've been told that I have to learn the local uh, uh, language. Yeah. Uh, but as a level of lawyer and a compliance person, as a, as a global HR person, uh, I did a quick uh, market research, see what would be the most cost effective plan for me. So okay. I, took, uh, I understood that my roles, that I would be the perfect match for actually global roles with US companies working in EMEA and also in Asia. Um, so for me, from that perspective, I should have learned every local language in, in Europe to be successful. Uh, kind of mission impossible, yeah. Also, um, 
based myself in Mitte, which is basically the middle of Berlin. So um, yeah. everyone speaks English here. And the situation here is even better since COVID because a lot of things uh, you can do like uh, online. Yes. And you can even talk with the finance department uh, office yes. in Berlin in okay. English. Oh, really? Yeah. But I would, I would blame that, um, you know, eventually I do believe that it's good. To, to know and to learn the local yeah. language. Yeah, that's true. And this is one very good information for all the expats, right? Most of the, and especially being in HR profession, you are in HR, I'm in HR as well. And even I do not know German, but definitely it's important to learn German if you want to stay in Germany for long, which I am trying to, but trust me, it's very tough, <laughs> but I'm trying to learn. But yes, if you want to move to Germany and you do not know German language, that should not be a complete blocker. I particularly suggest candidates is think of different ways as you did, right? Think of areas where German is not really mandatory and then find your way out. But let that not be a blocker. So now uh, let's get into this discussion. And what I understand is that you work with a lot of high tech companies in Europe, Asia, uh, different countries for them to expand their business here in Europe. So it would be interesting to know from you what these companies are looking for and what are the major challenges these companies are facing? Sure. So uh, basically because of my uh, legal background, so you can claim that I'm a unique uh, HR person because I'm also coming from uh, data analysis and uh, uh, legal background. So one of my um, roles were actually uh, to estimate what is the best country for you when you want to uh, expand your business. Uh, the parameters that are super crucial for companies that want to expand uh, would be first to understand the regulatory environment and the yeah. political environment and, and landscape, especially these days with the uncertain uh, economy. So you do see still companies expand to Europe, especially U.S. companies, um, uh, software companies until they IPO. A uh, European market is like approximately 40% of their revenue, and they're still optimistic about uh, growing and expanding. So these are the good news. But you do need to be more cautious because of economic uncertainty and the political environment to make sure you have all the data before you're expanding. That yeah. includes also um, understanding the labor laws here, understanding extra compliance like the AI Act or GDPR when it comes to your employees, ability of employment. I engage with a, with a client that uh, hired their first local CEO and then it didn't work out. And uh, this guy was on the payroll for one year just because of local laws that they did not understand, okay. which is like super crucial for startups that wants to expand when it comes yes. to uh, operational costs. Uh, other challenge is a uh, talent shortage. So uh, good and the bad news, right? The good news is that Germany uh, has talent shortage, uh, but also has a uh, great manpower here. So there is ability to relocate and, and there is a very friendly environment when it comes to visa processes. There is also yeah. really good manpower here and okay. operational costs that's important uh, how much it will cost you uh, and also easiness of transportation um, and cost of living uh, there is a lot of stories of people that came here the company uh, did not provide the proper support and okay. now these days became a really mission impossible uh, to find real estate in in berlin uh, yeah. landscape and uh, didn't estimate really the cost of living here and the high cost of, of uh, uh, apartments and this is something that should be also included in the in the planning yes i think that's a very important thing right i mean finding a it said i don't know if you're aware of that saying or not but it is said it's easier to find a job in germany and but more difficult to find an apartment in germany you know that is what it is said and uh, so now that you talk to so many companies and you have you know you you have this data so do can you can you tell us companies are looking to expand in europe but in last six years, what what is the trend? Do you see more companies looking to expand or it is reducing? Basically, uh, what is the future for Europe or Germany? Do you think that more global companies would want to come here and expand their businesses or you see a decline? So decision if to expand your business or not would be always depend on the economic uh, landscape and should be considered. Yes. Uh, you do see uh, more um, companies being cautious of, 
should they expand or not to, to Europe these days? But according to McKinsey's survey, really from Q1-24, uh, uh, you can still see that U.S. company, despite the uncertain economic and political landscape in Europe, still expanding their uh, companies. You can okay. also see specific industries in Europe that's rapidly growing in like a really uh, huge investment like uh, biotechnology and uh, the health sector. Uh, they just okay. received like, from a European investment bank 4.3 billion, um, billion uh, uh, euro investment for, for this year. Uh, you can also see the AI and machine learning uh, and R&D yeah. incentives uh, taxation in Germany promoting uh, this industry uh, that should grow. Um, you have like, uh, of course, global companies that uh, operate here, right? like with Tesla and Mercedes-Benz and yeah. uh, you have also um, everything related to logistic solutions, yeah. something like uh, Amazon, uh, and of course, renewable energy. Yeah, that's also in Germany, but also in, in Spain and Denmark. Yeah, and of course, everything related to blockchain and digital payment in the UK, mostly. Great. So also, Gerrit, what would be interesting to know is, for which kind of roles, which European country has more demand? Do you see that there is a difference that this particular country is mainly focusing on this particular technology and it would be easier for candidates to find a job in that country rather than struggling in some other European country? If you can give us some insights on that, that would be great. Sure. So uh, basically, um, you have a, a very stable uh, economy, right? Uh, uh, in Europe, you have like the major countries, which are like uh, Germany, France and the UK. Uh, Germany is specializing in automotive uh, mainly and IT and engineering. Uh, so okay. obviously you can have a lot of roles when it comes to this industry. Germany also, as mentioned, has a huge shortage of talent in this industry. So it uh, yes. makes their visa processes uh, more friendly uh, to foreigners uh, uh, coming to Germany. In Paris, for example, uh, you have mainly industry of like luxury uh, uh, goods, but you also have emerging market for IT. Uh, uh, professionals and you can see like more companies expanding uh, to France these days. Yeah. Uh, in the UK, uh, the main industry is finance, everything related okay. to blockchain, uh, digital payments, investment banks. Uh, you can see a lot of salespeople in these uh, uh, industries yeah. and also um, you have a lot of uh, IT people and pharmaceutical, uh, really strong uh, pharmaceutical companies as well. Okay. Um, other countries uh, like Amsterdam, like the Netherlands, for example, and Amsterdam, uh, so you have the industry of uh, logistics and agriculture, uh, but you also have a huge IT scene there. Um, okay. that you can see uh, really uh, also high uh, employment right there and they are also right. lacking of talents uh, and, and very friendly to foreigners as well including uh, tax benefits uh, yes. like Germany uh, okay. and um, other countries that you see really emerging and growing um, when it comes to IT are uh, Portugal and uh, Barcelona uh, specifically for uh, uh, these uh, these cities, so uh, Lisbon and Portugal offering a lot of um, uh, digital nomad options uh, in the IT uh, uh, industry, um, uh, same as uh, Barcelona. So it would be uh, great to see what would what would be happening uh, with us in the upcoming years. Okay, and that's a very good insight, right? When people are thinking of moving to Europe, because Germany has very uh, lenient visa laws and it's easier to get the visa with the new opportunity card and people can easily move to Germany. So they are only thinking about Germany. But uh, it's important to know that there are a lot of different other countries who are also expanding and there are a lot of uh, multinational companies who are investing in these different countries as well. Like you said, Netherlands, Spain, UK. So you can also try focusing on these different countries. I would add an additional point uh, uh, yeah. for that, uh, which is like um, the employment rate, right? So for example, a, a, a Spain. Uh, Spain is, uh, as, as we mentioned, right? So for example, Barcelona. So you have you could see really emerging uh, IT uh, uh, economy and, and more companies investing in, in, in Barcelona when it comes to that. But then yeah. uh, the employment rate in, in Spain is really low compared to the rest of uh, Europe. It's approximately like 65% yes. uh, uh, of 
not the second of the population is is working. So that means basically that if you move to Spain and uh, having a job there, uh, you should consider that after this job, if it will not be successful, you you might need to move to another country. It would be also important uh, uh, to understand like how much opportunities this country can give you. But the good right. news is that. When you are coming to more emerging economies, these economies are really growing. Uh, so you've been there from the start and you can actually grow even faster if that is successful. That's true. Um, and the majority of these countries are actually offering a lower cost of living, uh, which is of yeah. course also great and tax benefits uh, for you to yeah. relocate to them. Yes. So on that topic of employment rate, do you have insights or do you know why there is a major difference between employment rate in these different countries, say, compared to Spain and Germany, there is a difference in the employment rate. Do you know what's the main reason behind that? that that's a good question. Like I, I, I was reading a lot uh, on uh, Spain economy, especially uh, while living there for two years, right? Uh, exactly. And, and I, like, you have some um, uh, arguments, but uh, nobody really uh, can, can be certain that this is like uh, uh, the reason. Uh, right. But basically, um, the main uh, topic that they are talking about is efficiency. So it seems that uh, people in Spain, also in Portugal, they're working a lot of hours. And right. not necessarily they are productive in the work. Yeah. Sometimes they're working too many hours. This is like one argument of why the employment rate is, is very low in Spain. Uh, other argument is um, lacking of jobs. Uh, okay. and a correlation between what studies in the university and the actual work that uh, Spain can offer to their graduate. Okay, okay, interesting. And here, on the other hand, I think I can relate to that, that I think Germany or uh, Germans are more efficient when it comes to work, you know. Uh, even if they are very particular about work-life balance and working eight hours, but those eight hours are productive eight hours. They are very efficient. They do not want to while away time or waste time i think that's one thing i really like about germany that everybody want is efficient here i think uh, the german population right or the people that comes at least as a foreigners to germany like the, there is a, like a really uh, the love of, of work yes. uh, and, and working right like uh, so it's also something that you need uh, to have like uh, the the belief that you can pursue your dreams uh, through work or yes. uh, uh, being motivated, fulfill yourself by by work, uh, yes. which which is not necessarily in every culture. Um, yes, yes, yes. That's true. That's true. Okay, great. So now, what would be interesting to know is what what do you think? As if I'm an expat, say I'm in my home country and I am looking to now transition to Europe. Uh, what approach should I take when I'm thinking of moving to Europe? or finding a job in Europe? First, I would do uh, a market research, a true market okay. research. Uh, first on my industry and, and the role that I want to pursue uh, to better understand, uh, as mentioned, which countries uh, are the most suitable for me and can give me uh, the most opportunities uh, in my role in industry. Uh, second thing is the employment rate um, and yeah. the economy uh, stability and any political issues that uh, we might face in this environment, right? To make yeah. sure that I will, again, really a stable environment for the upcoming uh, years. And the third thing that I would search is a friendliness to foreigners. If you can, uh, a smooth, uh, soft landing with global expat uh, community, uh, English speaking. Yeah. Uh, if not, so maybe a community from your own country, uh, a large one that will make you uh, feel uh, comfortable at least at, at the beginning and really pursue a lot of uh, networking. Find mentor, yeah. uh, people that already succeeded here and can basically guide you on your next steps. It can be virtual meetings, it can be people from all over Europe uh, yes. with the networking that you have today. But it would be also important to join conferences in person, either in Germany or other countries because it's super important uh, also to meet in person to better understand the landscape. Um, yeah. I would also check um, cost of living and any tax benefits, super crucial. Yeah. yeah, and the last one, also very important, is the actual labor laws. Uh, for example, if you are relocating to Spain, it's still very easy to terminate uh, the contract. Like, uh, within yeah. two weeks, 
find yourself uh, outside. And then if okay. it's like super uh, hard to find a job, it's also something to consider, right? Especially if you were relocating with all your family. Uh, yes. So I would really prepare a long-term uh, plan of with a, with a plan B of what can go wrong if and how can I succeed something will go wrong yes uh, and I think that's a very right approach towards things even when I was researching about different countries and Germany my main motivation to come to Germany were these strong laws when it comes to employment or even the benefits that government is providing say uh, maternity benefits or Uh, the Deutschland ticket, you know, these small, small things. But that really helped me take a decision. Okay, Germany is my place because I see that they have strong laws towards employment as well. So I think that's a very good um, advice for all the job seekers that if things do not go in the right direction, then how much the country, the labor law is supporting you. And very interestingly, you uh, talked about this topic of networking. That was my next question. What do you think in your seven years here in Germany, how much networking is important? Or what role has networking played in your entire career once you moved into Germany? Because it's a new country, you hardly know people. So does it really help? Are people open to discuss and talk about things here in Europe? What do you say? So I'm, I'm a true believer in networking, uh, mm-hmm. by the way, not only in Europe. Uh, okay. and, and all my uh, seven years in Europe, uh, three and a half of them or four were, were COVID years, right? So like, uh, yeah. uh, so there was a lot of virtual uh, uh, networking. So yeah. for me, a person and, and most like uh, networking is uh, playing a role of, of uh, community. Ideally, it would be both, right? Ideally, it would find yourself uh, doing networking with uh, people in your own industry that you can learn yeah. from and uh, engage but also become your friends uh, but for me the most important was really um, uh, to gain community to make sure my relocation would be successful but by the way not necessarily need to be in your industry you can have great friends that are connected uh, not necessarily in your industry that can actually support you uh, in finding like the best opportunity another thing that I've learned about networking uh, especially after COVID it is that people really love to meet in person these days yeah and it really makes the difference uh, in yeah. Europe especially in Germany feel more conservative formal in-person connection rather than the virtual one and another thing that I can give advice is actually be proactive in your networking and uh, meaning yeah. go to conferences also all over Europe not only in Germany I uh, put efforts there and also act as a mentor yourself. Like you can also, of course, learn from uh, networking, learn from conference that you are uh, going to, like what what is the next opportunities and what is next uh, hype in your industry. But also yeah. you can, you can be a mentor and, and train people as well. Right. Yes. Great. And I personally also, I have seen a lot of difference when it comes to networking events here. Every networking event that I went to, even when I was on a job seeker visa, it helped me. I didn't get a direct job reference from anybody, but at least I got some insight of the current market. That really helped me in my job search journey as well. So definitely networking is a great way to find your community or your say even friends and uh, professional life and as you said even virtual events you can attend from your home country if you are thinking of coming to these uh, different countries that will also give you insights about the country that you're willing to relocate yeah then we, next we actually is, yeah we Sorry? actually met through networking right <laughs> we, we met through networking that yeah, is like, true. I mean, thinking about uh, it now yeah <laughs> through and see it was just a reference right through one of my friend and yeah. uh, i was looking to have a discussion with another hr professional and then i posted in this group and one of my friend contacted me that he knows you and that's how we got in touch and here we are having this discussion yeah. so and i met that. him through uh i think it's a really good example and i met him through a b2b uh, meetup network okay which is basically uh, allowing people to have a really close uh, uh, opportunity to see like how uh, startups are scaling and the real life of startups which is like a super interesting of global startups and so yeah. we actually met there it was not even an hr networking for me okay so like uh, it, it, this is like uh, how networking works uh, yes it's a very quick way of uh, moving things forward if you feel stuck 
I think go for networking. Talk to people and you will find a solution. So my next question to you would be, how is the German market, especially German market, different from all other European markets? And what do you think about what is the current German market? You know, it's there like some are saying there are recessions, but companies are still hiring. So what do you think is the current situation and how do you see this trend going in next, say, three years? So I think I asked you three questions now. <laughs> How is German market different from another European market? Let's start with that. So uh, German market uh, is still a very strong uh, market and stable market relatively. Um, yeah. uh, there is a 77% of employment rate, which is very high. Yes. I think higher than that is the Netherlands, uh, but it's a smaller country, uh, of course. Okay. Uh, other aspects of Germany is uh, basically, as, as we mentioned, the talent shortage compared to other uh, uh, countries and the willingness to uh, accept foreigners and the easiness of the, of the visa compared to other uh, countries. So it still uh, makes Germany a friendly uh, place to, uh, to land. Also, there is the aspect of uh, easiness of transportation, which is not less important. Um, but having said that, you can still see changes and you can see still of uh, stability of the economy and a uh, higher cost yeah. of living uh, when it comes to real estate, higher taxation when it comes to uh, restaurants. And of course, yes. higher income tax, uh, but th that was uh, happening uh, always. Uh, so where Germany goes, this is a good question. I'm not an economic uh, uh, expert. Uh, yeah. Where you, you can ask where Europe will be, right? Uh, in, the, in the upcoming years. Like, I, I would, I would yeah. question, like, who knows what, what, what would be the answer? Like I chose to leave here because I do believe and I can still see that Germany is relatively uh, stable and welcoming uh, for foreigners and still uh, provide uh, options. And still have like a good labor law and social stability and social support, uh, yeah. also great uh, community. But of course, there are other countries that, as mentioned, has, for example, less taxation, like uh, Spain or Portugal. Definitely, and I think you're absolutely right. Who knows what's going to happen in next few years? But uh, I, I think uh, right now, just to let everybody know, yes, things. I mean, I, I say this in my videos as well. Previous year, they were like, if they were like 100 companies hiring, uh, this year, they are like 50 companies hiring. But that does not mean that there is completely a downside or a recession. I think in one of our videos, we discussed that in Germany overhired a lot in previous year. And what we think right now is happening is stabilization. It's not a really recession. And uh, then these companies are stabilizing. And after some time, they'll start rehiring again. So right now, if you ask what is the German market, not completely into recession, it's not completely at its peak, but you know, there are still jobs, people are still uh, giving interviews, companies are still hiring, so go for it. Do not think twice. And if something happens, then you will find a solution. We can always find a solution. There is no guarantee of anything, right? No, not even yeah. our home country, right? Like wherever we are, there's no guarantee what's going to happen. For sure. Uh, for sure with all the elections as well, the global election, globally, right, that, that are happening this year. So yeah. there's a lot of uncertainty. But again, there is a lot of also optimism, as mentioned from US companies, still uh, uh, planning to expand in Europe. Uh, the European Commission, the European Investment Bank that really put a lot of, pour a lot of money on specific industries, right? Like renewable energy, uh, yeah. IT, AI, and, uh, and health uh, uh, sector. Um, okay. And I do believe that uh, if you are planning ahead and you have like a plan B, um, like what would be the best country for you and what would you do if if that would not work and come with X money with you, uh, uh, just in case, uh, would be the best. Because uh, what we're seeing as well, by the way, is that companies doesn't always know plan uh, ahead, uh, yeah. especially these days. So they might uh, feel optimistic and then they hire and then they fire uh, before the yeah. probation. So this is something that you need to consider if you're doing relocation and really plan ahead and make sure that you are aware of different opportunities. Yes. And uh, thank you for bringing that up because, again, that was the next discussion I wanted to get into. 
that one way to uh, you know make it big here in germany is job but definitely that's not the only way so it would be very interesting to know what do you think are the different ways to be successful here in germany or europe is it just a job or people can also do their own businesses startups what do you think what is the culture right now here so you can always see uh, when you have uh, more economic uncertainty or lack of stability that uh, the market goes to more like a project oriented rather than uh, a long term full time employment you can see that also uh, these days still europe is very conservative market so you can see that uh, the majority of the workers still work as a full time employees versus the us Uh, where you have like 38% of the population working as a freelance either in the IT or as an advisors i'm in the i'm surrounded by the IT community this uh, economic uncertainty and uh, rapidly layoffs of also a uh, huge corporates that usually consider stable but not anymore these days great IT people that took this year and a half i mean uh, two years maybe to pursue their own entrepreneurial venture Uh, okay. and they have the money for that so i'm seeing a lot of great creativity connection uh, happening uh, because of that so not only not all bad because of uh, economic and st- lack of stability right sometimes it, it brings like a uh, beautiful stuff it would be yeah. especially in the ai industry it would be great to see in the coming year what will happen uh, with that but i think like eventually you do need to shift kind of a shift of mindset Uh, yeah. I know that we discussed about it uh, uh, previously from like really traditional uh, industry I'm coming to work 9 to 5 and this is what I'm looking for is more like long uh, term business goals about uh, how I'm going to drive my own company because you are the driver right you uh, yes. if, if you are not driving this it will not uh, go uh, anywhere and also of course uh, you have to be self motivated and resilient because something that is very important when you're operating your own uh, uh, your own company yes and uh, trust me it's been one and a half years for me here in germany and i personally believe and i can vouch for it there are a lot of opportunities yes you have great work great work life balance but if you are a person who wants to do more who has who has this thing in their mind that they want to make it big trust me there are a lot of different opportunities that you can think of you can try off here in europe uh, very interestingly the other day i went for a stand up comedy show and in that the comedian mentioned one statement which really uh, got stuck in my mind he said back in asia there there are a lot of ideas but you need money to make it big and here in europe you have money you need a good idea to make it big you know so i think that's a very interesting way to put it across if you have great ideas and if you have that resilience as you said and you can give your 100 percent then definitely you can do that shift from being an employee to an employer i think that's what we were talking about think about yeah. that don't just think about jobs yes you can come through a job but the whole idea is to be successful here you never know your idea can just go big and i see a lot of people doing that especially expats i see that mindset in expats but yeah. not in germans that much do you agree i do i can tell you that i also have been discussed with berlin uh, partners and usually the german more local uh, are more conservatives and uh, they are more into their 9 to 5 uh, large uh, enterprise uh, organization uh, yes. and to be honest i think like if you want to really understand the change of mindset uh, you should start to work in a startup Uh, because basically you will do uh, the same right you will wear a few hats and you will you will need to be uh, self motivated and and also to drive yeah. and to be a leader so i think it would be the best uh, practice if if i want to give an additional practical advice uh, for people coming here in this uh, economic uncertainty so you can yeah. also be a freelance and uh, be yeah. expert in your field and really uh, commit to to project uh, yes. and i think that would be to be honest the safest bet because then you don't necessarily tie to probation and one employer uh, so that can be a good idea as well yes and just to add on to that point if you get end up getting a blue card which is a working permit here in germany your blue card allows you to even work as a freelancer so it is allowed you don't need a separate visa for that but it is always a best practice to let your employer know that you are also yeah, working sure. as a freelancer 
just to be on the safer side and most of the companies are okay with it that's a great advice rather than starting your own business why not consult people and work as a freelancer and then build your own brand and basically you can build do it on uh, abroad like once you do that by the way in in the EU you are opening yourself to to the rest of the world so not yes. necessarily need to work uh, only for german employer right so so if something goes wrong you can also find yourself uh, working for a different uh, employer in the yes. in the eu okay so what do you uh, in your seven years tell me what's the best part about moving to germany and tell me what's not so good part about so that was the best part right so the best part yeah. is I'm, i'm coming from a tiny country so the best part really uh, being global right uh, working with global companies going to the world traveling a lot really understanding different cultures different mindsets uh, ability to communi- communicate with different people uh, the easiness of uh, doing business here and really meeting people that i would never met in my life unless i would move here and i love people right I mean, in the people business. Yeah. Uh, also there is like a great community here. I'm learning a lot. Uh, it's always fun and and I can always uh, find myself like a, a meetup in my industry or other industries like it's it's like the easiness of of finding like great professional network and a quality of living here is like a super easy. Good part coming from Tel Aviv is the weather of course uh, when it comes to uh, uh, Berlin. So I don't have uh, a lot of sun. Uh, and you don't have air condition uh, when you do so uh, usually so you actually struggling in in aspects that uh, you you didn't think that you, sh- you should struggle in 2024 uh, but the yeah. good news on that is that uh, you get used to that and you adapt to that as a human being well that's that's true you cannot escape the weather but as you said you adapt to it but what really you know again i was ve- it was very interesting for me to get this different perspective from somebody who has started their own business here in germany most of the people when you talk to when it comes to how is it going in germany they always say it's, it's difficult to start a business life is tough here there is so much bureaucratic work there's so much documentation uh, people don't talk in Ge- uh, english and things like that and now when i'm talking to you you are giving me a different perspective altogether that it's easy it's easy to start a business is easy to network is easy to have this global presence and that is exactly what i want to b- let people know it's just it's a mindset you know there are people who can keep complaining about things that are not going in the right direction or there are other people like you who are so positive and so motivated that things are going in the right direction the global presence that you have received here you would have never received in your home country the different community that you are talking to people that you are talking to so that's the way to look at life i personally feel that and it purely is an individual choice how do you look at a situation and so whether you listen to the negative side of it or you listen to the positive side of it it's purely an individual choice what do you think i can totally yeah i can totally resonate with that uh you do need to be optimistic but it's also important to do your own uh, research right so yeah. please uh, mindful that i'm eating uh, bureaucracy for breakfast right because i'm a liberal lawyer so what yeah. might be easy for me <laughs> right so like might not be easy for another uh, uh, human being right that is not used to bureaucracy uh, i'm yes. also familiar with a lot of people uh, all over europe that are english speaking uh, that can assist with bureaucracy so that that like i know a uh, good advice is like outsource when it's painful for you right like uh, don't yeah. don't uh, don't save costs when it's painful for you outsource uh, when it comes to bureaucracy and uh, other aspects that like choose where you live because my experience I'm a human, right? So my experience would be and the, the feeling of belonging, right? For expats, we can have a, a different chapter uh, of that. Yeah. Uh, only on, only on this topic. Uh, yeah. So like it, it's sufficient for me to work one hour from Berlin Mitte to feel not belong and uh, struggling and not uh, potentially welcoming environment like I have here, right? So it's also right. important to do research and to figure out like where is the best place for you to live. Uh, yeah. I am paying what I'm calling like uh, expat tax, which means that I would pay probably higher rent uh, yeah. to live in a specific uh, central location in yeah. order to make my life easier. Uh, <laughs> and, and, and I'm okay with that. I'm okay with yeah. that. Right? Eventually, uh, uh, that provides a lot of benefits. Right. 
Wow, interesting, interesting way to look at it. Expect tax is what you said, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I think I and I think comfort and the feeling of belonging is so important. Yeah. Otherwise, you can go to the best and the best places, but if you do not get that feeling of belonging or happiness, you can still feel very sad and lonely and homesick. You are right. And for that, if you are in Germany or you have left your home country. you have to make an effort things won't happen automatically people won't come and knock on your door oh we want to be friends with you we want to know you more you have to step out of your comfort zone and make an effort yeah and and my experience is that people are very open here extremely open here by the way also uh, local germans very open uh, like my experience yeah. is that like like i came and i don't know it's a very close uh, you know uh, environment and very conservative but uh, once you're living here like a few years uh, so the sense is that uh, people are very uh clear in the communication very authentic communication very open great great and have you learned german now or how is it what level at german are you at uh really basic to be honest again just because i'm working mainly with with global companies uh although it, it, i also need always to excuse myself because my family name is schneider because my uh, father family originally from austria and my mother was born in frankfurt but i was never yeah. i never needed to learn the language right okay. but uh, again i'm i'm still you know i'm 7 years in europe they all good <laughs> until now all good Uh, I, will, I will update. I will update if if needed. But like, uh, usually I'm working around like ten uh, hours per day in English, and my friends okay. speak English. Okay. Okay. Nice. So I think it it was great to get so much insights. And before we end uh, this discussion, I would want to ask you this last question: one piece of advice that you would give to people who are planning to make it big. you're in germany or europe what would that be so really uh create long term business goals make sure you understand the landscape uh, the political yeah. landscape the cultural sensitivity uh, how to communicate with different uh, countries there is a huge differentiation here between uh, specific countries uh, really understand uh, the compliance and the, the the laws here and how they differ from for example the US or Asia before you come in and yeah. uh, not as important be prepared when it comes to community supportive system for you to have a better and and soft landing right right i think it's yes it's important to do all that research thank you and one advice for the job seekers you know in the current market it has become so competitive I see so many job seekers, and everybody is trying to find a job. This was not a situation few, uh, say, even one year back, but now things have turned around. So, what would be the advice for the job seekers? First, explore more than just option. One option, not only Germany, yes. right? Explore all over Europe. Explore US. Yes. Explore other countries. Uh, uh, where the, where is the country that will bring you the best opportunity in your own uh, industry, in your own role for the long run? The cost of living and and taxation, and also yeah. change of uh, a mindset when it comes to um, how you work. Like not necessarily a company that can offer you full time employment can be project based, or either uh, establish your own consultancy uh, firm yeah. or. company uh, in order to practice in what you like but i wouldn't necessarily um, be conservative uh, these days and i actually yeah. think that there are still really good opportunities uh, in europe my 7 years here uh, although there were like ups and downs like every good relocation uh, i think uh, it was extremely beneficial for me and i wouldn't take this experience ever so anyway you would learn uh, from this experience Uh, and learning is always uh, great so come curious come to learn and yeah. uh, do your research uh, in order to be uh, ready uh, for what will come wow the that's that's a great advice and i love that sentence come to learn you know don't come with your preset mindset that i know so much i have 15 years of experience and i can just come here and transition and i can again you have to be very open minded you have to start it fresh you have to come to learn be open with new ideas new culture new differences and that's how you will integrate well sooner and then you can again make it big 
I think uh, that was the best sentence of this discussion. Come to learn. I love that. Thank you so much, Yerit. It was amazing uh, having you on this discussion. And I know it's very unusual to ask somebody in Europe to shoot a video on Saturday or work on Saturday. <laughs> Uh, I know that so but I have a lot of gratitude towards you a lot of thanks to be uh, featured in this video and uh, share so much insights with us so thank you thank you so much thank you thank you very much for hosting me uh, it was great uh, speaking with you uh, yeah and would love to support any uh, company uh, that would like to uh, grow in Europe or any other questions so feel free to reach out yes I think that is great so uh, we will also share uh, your details in the description below so anybody any small company or high-tech company who's planning to expand in Europe and needs any uh, consultation services from Yerit then definitely feel free to reach out to her and if there are any job seekers who are looking to find a job here in Germany and you want to know how to interview how to create your resume then you can reach out to me I provide a lot of these services so thank you so much once again so thank you so much everybody for watching this video i hope this was very insightful and you get a lot of information in case if you have any questions especially for me or get it you can always mention in the comment section and we will try our best to respond to your comments and as i always say it's very important in case if you're finding a job here in germany to have a perfect cv so i have created a crash course which you can take it's around one hour and that is definitely going to help you to get more interview calls here in germany and not only that in case if you're planning to learn german then there is this institute that I've tied up with. They have trained more than 80,000 students for German language. So you can go ahead and take, uh, enroll yourself and start learning German. One suggestion, try to learn German from your home country uh, uh, rather than trying to learn it from Germany because things have become very expensive here. So thank you so much uh, for taking out time and watching this video. I'll see you again. I wish you all the best. Thank you. Have a great day.